Hi, I'm Kevin Kos and this is Cocktail Time. Last week was the birthday of the first man who stepped on the moon, Neil Armstrong. And because Mr. Armstrong reached out of this world, you're making a variation of a cocktail that will be reaching out of the glass. You're making Jim Fizz. To make a Jim Fizz, we'll of course need gin. <coughs> but not just any old gin. This is a perfect opportunity to use small batch Hendrix Lunar Gin. I got it right here. Here we go. Enjoy. See ya. Okay. Thanks. This is a deeply floral and richly aromatic limited release gin conceived under the influence of Moonlight by the master distiller at Hendrix, Miss Leslie Gracie. It was designed to be shared and savored on an evening as the sun goes down and the moon charges the sky. A typical gin fizz also calls for lemon, simple syrup and egg white. But we typically don't do typical cocktails on cocktail time, so let's play on that floral notes of Hendrix and add homemade lavender bitters and violet liqueur. Bitter truth violet liqueur is made from wild violet blossoms that grow in the Alps and are then added to the finest neutral spirit. It gives every cocktail a special bluish color. And to make our cocktail a fizz, we'll need soda water. Thomas Henry is a great choice and it's always a good idea to keep all of your carbonated drinks cold so they don't lose as much carbonation when opened. While we take our shaker, add ice and all the ingredients except soda water. Let's look at some interesting facts about the astronaut who famously took one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Neil Armstrong loved aviation since he was a child and got a student's pilot's license at age 16. That was even before he got a driver's license. On June 21st, 1969, he spent two and a half hours walking on the surface of the moon. Sixty meters is the furthest he walked from the lunar module. He resigned from NASA in 1971 and kept a low profile. In 1985, he even joined a North Pole exploration without any media coverage. Now, let's drain the ice and shake this thing. Since we added egg white, which will provide a thick, creamy foam, we'll do what is called a reverse dry shake. Some bartenders shake the ingredients first to emulsify the egg white, then add ice and shake again. But I find that shaking with ice first, then shaking again after discarding ice, provides a thicker foam, which is really important for this cocktail. Oh, and egg whites have been used in cocktails since 19th century, so no need to worry, as long as you use fresh eggs or keep the store-bought egg white in the fridge and use it in a reasonable time. That should do it. Get your shield glass ready. Thank you. Fine straining will provide a silky foam. You can see it forming straight away. Add a small amount of soda water, so the foam almost reaches the top of the glass. Now we wait a little bit so the foam thickens, and then we add some more soda. This will raise the foam over the edge of the glass, like a rocket reaching for the sky. And for the final touch, a spray of essential oils from a lemon peel. Discard the peel, because this cocktail is its own garnish. And that's 
the lunar fees. Let's try it. The citrus and floral notes are there if we take the first sip. The first sensation is the creaminess and the wonderfully balanced botanicals of the lunar gin, with the violets being in the forefront because of the liqueur. We made a delightful cocktail that you can enjoy with all of your senses. This is a perfect cocktail to commemorate what would be the 90th birthday of Neil Armstrong. I hope you'll dare to try this recipe. And remember, never be afraid of exploring. You never know where it's gonna take you. Cheers and see you back here next week for more cocktails. Oh! 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 <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh <dear laughs> Thanks for watching till the end and for your support so far. If you like this episode, share it with a friend. And as always, cheers. <laughs>